My name is Jean-Fuen Tam. I'm the National Director for Habitat for Humanity in Haiti. I've been working with Habitat for the last four years in Haiti. As National Director, my role is to interact with the official government, the donors, the partners, but also to overseeing the operations of the organization in the country. Habitat has been working in Haiti since 1984. In Haiti, Habitat is working on housing microfinance, um, alternative construction materials, technical capacity building, but also land tenure, which is the topic that we will discuss today. Historically, Haiti has been facing a shortage of housing, with 25% of the Haitian population lacking access to decent housing, in a, also in a poverty context where over 58% of the Haitian lives under $2 a day. In addition to long-term challenge, challenges, the natural disasters also significantly contribute to deteriorate the housing situation in Haiti. Only in 2010, the earthquake damaged or destroyed around 300,000 homes in the country. In 2010, the earthquake destroyed around 300,000 homes. In the meantime, the population continued to grow. The migration from rural to urban areas continues. Today, Haiti is the fourth urbanized country in the Latin America, with 57% of the Haitian population live in urban areas. So it is obvious that the pressure on the demand for housing will continue to grow in the urban context. The housing crisis in Haiti is linked to a series of factors, but the access to property rights on land is the major bottleneck that the families will have to face, as the land tenure will give them the possibility to mobilize resources. They will be able to give the land titles as guarantee to receive a loan to invest in their house. Unfortunately, the land tenure system in Haiti is struggling to guarantee the access to property rights on land to families. The land tenure system itself is facing a range of challenges, and, and the major one is the lack of cadastre. In Haiti, it's quite difficult right now to say who on what, as we don't have a proper land registration system in place. The last cadastral survey that has been conducted in Haiti was done in 1786, and recently the Haitian government has conducted um, a land data. Recently, the Haitian government, through the SIAT office, collected cadastral data in six communes over a total of 146. Secondly, there is a serious lack of documentation. Traditionally, Haitian families, they do transactions over land based on customary practices. There is no proper document. They based all the tra transaction on trust as neighbors. Thirdly, the system is facing uh, a lack of um, connection among the actors that are involving in the land tenure system in the country. Between the mayors and the Ministry of, of, of Finance and the Tax Office DGI, legally on papers, the wall and responsibility are clear, but in practice, it's quite difficult to see who is responsible for what. I think that's where, as organization, we have a key role to play if we want to help to address the land tenure um, situation in Haiti. Under the project, Habitat planned to work with 12,000 families. But in the second year, now we're moving towards the third year of the project, we already reached 35,000 families, which show the, the scale of the, of the problem, but also the needs for regularizations of the situation of family living illegally on government land and also private people, private sector land. 
In Habitat Haiti, we believe that the long-term solution to the housing crisis in Haiti should pass through securing access to property rights on land for low-income families as it facilitates long-term investment in their housing. In the leveraging land project, Habitat focusing on working with the different actors, government body, civil society working in the land tenure system to smooth the relationship, the connection, and facilitate access to land tenure services to low-income families across the country. In the project, we are at a pilot stage in three communes, the Leogan communes and the Fort Liberté and the Quadebuque communes. However, the formalization process itself including registrations of the families in the government system, investigation to know exactly who live where, who occupy which parcels since when, and the capacity building of all the actors involving in the, in the land tenure system, particularly in using the new equipment that will be introduced in the system, requires significant investment and continuous support. Haiti has always been stuck in a vicious circle of disasters and recovery. And the country has, has also been for decades the, the main recipient in the region for humanitarian aid to help families to reduce their vulnerabilities and address their, their housing needs. Those, those, those interventions, even though they were doing them on a humanitarian agenda, but they can be linked to um, to a land tenure project or program that could help those families the, or the communities to address the land tenure issues. As the land tenure situation in Haiti remain one of the, the factors of vulnerability of the country. At habitat level, um, we, we, housing remain one of our focus, um, to say our main focus. But instead of focus on just building housing, we, we focus on the system itself, which, which, which means that we work on different aspects that can affect the housing sector. For example, we work on, on the land tenure. Under this program, as I mentioned um, um, at the beginning of the video, we work with um, the the state and non-state actors involving in the land tenure system to address the situations of families living illegally on, on state lands. The objectives for that is to encourage the families to engage in long-term investment in the program, in, in their houses. But as an organization, we also consider land tenure not only as a sector to work, but a cross-cutting sector, because the land tenure affects every program that we're doing in, in Haiti. I mentioned already the housing, but also the, the, the slums or urban upgrading program, because anytime you want to invest in a public infrastructure in a community, that's where you, you face the land tenure challenge. And that's why recently we were invited um, in a in a documentation that was that was supposed that was done by um, the 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 article David on the urban upgrading experience in Haiti after the earthquake habitat position was clear that the land reorganization in Haiti is the main tool that can help the Haitian government to address the to address the vulnerability of the of the families and the communities addressing the urban planning issue in in, in haiti sent us back again to the land tenure situation we won't be able to reorganize the space to reorganize the community without addressing the land tenure without knowing who live where where people can't build, where people can live, where that we should keep as green space or playground or, or residential areas. To which that point, we will definitely have to address the issue of land tenure. As organizations, 
as organization, uh, we commit to, to work by side by side with the Haitian government to address the, the issue of, of land tenure, to address the issue of reorganized community. But knowing the limited resources in the country, we will definitely have to count on your support as you already started to support us to be able to do this work in Haiti. Addressing the land tenure situation in Haiti is a long journey that requires commitment but also significant resources. You've been with us in, on the journey for a decade already. We would like to invite you to continue the journey with us. Thank you for your attention.